Scare Me to Death by Matthew Scott Montgomery. This Halloween party is a total snooze fest. What's next, bobbing for apples, Marcy asked, rolling her eyes. She picked up a gummy black spider and sniffed it. Gross, licorice, I'd sooner wretch. And the punch isn't even spiked, what are we, 12? Marcy, Colin, Ten, and I had been huddled by the refreshments table in Stephanie Channing's basement ever since we'd gotten there 13 minutes ago. How did I know it was 13 minutes exactly? Because I was literally counting down the seconds. I'm going to go stare at myself in the mirror for five minutes, and when I come back, we're ghost, Marcy said, flipping up her red hood and stalking up the stairs to the bathroom. Dude, Staver, I know your parents and Stephanie's parents are like BFFs, but this party is DOA. We got to trounce before I turn into a real zombie, Colin said, placing his hand on my shoulder. A sticky gray glob of zombie makeup slid off his chin and plopped on my skeleton hoodie. It's true. This party was straight up wickety whack. Stephanie Channing is a tiny blonde girl in our sophomore class. Glasses? Check. On the yearbook staff? Check. Tries honestly way too hard? A double check. I kind of felt bad for Stephanie. She's involved in pretty much every school activity, but still sits alone at lunch, usually with poster board and magic markers for whatever fundraiser for whatever club she's in. And her weird parents and my parents have been besties for years, so I usually see Stephanie at holidays and stuff. At school, and I know it's awful, but I kind of just avoid her. I mean, I'm not mean exactly, but I kind of just treat her like the plague. Stephanie's basement was decked out with streamers and cobwebs and tray after tray after tray of pumpkin-shaped sugar cookies that she kept bringing out. Monster mash tinkled out of speakers. Ten and I were nursing orange cups of unspiked witch's brew while four neighborhood kids who probably were 12 basically just stood around. Colin hadn't stopped snacking since we'd parked in our party spot. Just then, Stephanie came flopping over in an embarrassing witch costume, hopping on a kitchen broom. I'll get you, my pretty, Stephanie said. (laughs) Hilarious. Hey, Staver, it's so neat that you brought your friends. There's more than twice the amount of people here that RSVP'd on Facebook. Her round glasses reflected the green light from a nearby glow-in-the-dark skeleton, making it look as if she had two lemon-lime orbs for eyes. Yeah, um... Sure, Stephanie, Um, but I actually think Mother said having a party is a surefire way to make friends. And who doesn't love Halloween, Stephanie said, (laughs) stepping a little closer to me. Rad, I said. Yeah, this, this party's definitely got me spooked. Something wicked this way comes, Ten said, walking up to me. Marcy was coming down the stairs looking none too pleased. Must have been someone in the bathroom. Hello, Reginald, Stephanie said. A nice costume. What are you supposed to be, a giant hamster? Ten and I exchanged glances. I'm Teen Cat, Ten said, his facial expressions looking more and more like Marcy's by the second. You know, from Teen Cat? Stephanie's mouth hung open. Um, and he goes by Ten, I told her. Kind of hates being called Reginald. Affirmative, Stephanie said. Right, Ten said. I'm gonna go somewhere else now. He turned around to meet up with Colin and Marcy. I saw Colin shove another fistful of Jacko cookies in his mouth. Sorry, I think me and my friends just wanted to do something really scary tonight, I said. I'd promised my friends after we stopped by Stephanie's party that we'd do something that was actually fun and scary. Earlier that week, my mom made me promise I'd go to Stephanie's party, so I bailed on getting tickets to the creepy corn hay maze on the other side of town. Ten had already been to the maze anyway, and Marcy doesn't really like doing anything, and Colin pretty much just goes along with whatever Marcy does, so it wasn't a super huge struggle to get them to tag, but the reality of the supernatural lameness of the shindig was really starting to set in. Well, Staver, Marcy said to me as she popped up in between us, You promised me we would do something tonight that would make me want to scream, and you're now officially a man of your word. She cut a look in Stephanie's direction. I should get more cookies, Stephanie said, cowering back up to the stairs. Let's go to the graveyard, Marcy said. Yeah, doesn't that sound like fun, Ten asked, his eyes lighting up. Can't we just stay, like, like ten more minutes? If we leave, half the party is gone, I said. What party, Marcy asked. I'm out of here. Sabrina, the teenage loser witch's stench of lame, is starting to rub off on my little red riding dress. Come on, Staver, it's Halloween, Ten said. Teen Cat's got eight more lives, and he wants to pull some serious tricks and treats before it's November already. Stephanie emerged at the top of the steps with a fresh batch of cookies and a stupid grin. She tripped on her clunky witch heels as she stumbled down the steps. Whoopsie daisy, she said. You're right, it's time, I said to my friends. I manned up and helped Stephanie add the cookies to the overflowing bat plate that held the rest of them. Hey, Steph, um, thanks so much for having us. It's been a real scream, I said. What? You guys can't leave. 
We haven't even started bobbing for apples yet, she said. Oh, sorry, Stephanie. Turns out we don't bob, Ten said, grabbing my hand and pulling me up the stairs. I saw Colin and Marcy disappear behind the door. Huh? Stephanie's mouth hung open as I gave one last wave goodbye. She called after me. Wait! I can be scary. 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 Cold October air hugged us in an icy wrap as we danced out into the street. For some reason, our walk up the steps had turned into a full-on run by the time we got outside. Marcy and Colin giggled, running, holding hands as a full moon brightly lit the leaf-littered asphalt path before us. Ten did his best teen cat impersonation and cat called at the moon. I grabbed a fat yellow jack o lantern that sat at the end of the Channing's driveway. After skipping down the street, soaking in our Halloween-y freedom, we snuck into the woods for a short walk to the nearby graveyard. Next thing I knew, we were having an all Halloween picnic amongst the graves. Whoa, my butt is probably six feet above some dead dude's face right now, Colin said, laughing. He used his phone to light up the nearest tombstone. Sorry, Thackeray. Don't say butt, Marcy said. The light from the jack-o'-lantern in the middle of us cast yellow, crisscrossy beams of light that hid themselves in the dimples of her joker grin. Sorry, Colin said. Smooth move, Stave, grabbing the jack-o'-lantern. Thanks, I shrugged. I felt a twinge of guilt of stealing it, basically, but at least now we had some light. A trick-or-treat, Marcy said, pulling out a shiny little flask from her basket of goodies she had along with her costume. She took a sip and passed it to Ten. So, when's the last time you guys were really scared? I mean, like, really, really, Ten asked. Um, how about five minutes ago, Marcy said. We all laughed. (laughs) No, seriously, I mean, like... Like, do you guys believe in ghosts or witches? Ten asked. Mm, I want to, but I just don't. I said, I just, I don't think, I don't think I scare very easily. Isn't there a thing where you like get so scared so bad that your hair turns white? Colin asked. I feel like I read that somewhere. Or be scared to death. death, 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 death. Marcy said. Bull roar, Ten said. You can't be so scared you just die. You're the one who wants to talk about bumps in the night, Marcy said. It's true. I saw this TV special on it. This woman this one time died because she was so terrified, so scared that her heart literally just stopped. She didn't have any diseases or whatever. Literally nothing was wrong with her. And when they did the autopsy, it was confirmed that she was scared to death. death. A hush fell over me and my friends. For reals, I asked. What scared her, Ten asked. It's so sad. These kids were just playing a trick on her. It was on Halloween. These two kids had bought these masks, see? Ugly, horrible masks, and hid in the bushes next to her house. She was coming home from getting groceries or something, and they popped out and yelled, Blah! And when she saw the masks, they said she screamed, screamed so loud, a high, horrible, inhuman sound, and then fell over. Dead. Did they get charged for manslaughter, Colin asked? No doofus, Marcy said. They were just kids. I can't imagine something scaring me so bad that I would just die, I said, that you just, like, have a heart attack and stop breathing. Is it bad to pee in a graveyard, Ten asked. We all laughed. (laughs) Way to kill the mood, Ten, I said. What? I gotta piss it out. Be right back, he said, skipping off into the dark on all fours in a silly teen cat prowl. Another five minutes at Stephanie Channing's and I might have fallen over dead, Marcy said. I thought about Stephanie back at her house with only four other kids there, literally kids. I think I'm going to be sick, Colin said. Do I look like I'm going to throw up? Yeah, but you're wearing pounds of gray and green zombo makeup, Marcy said. I think I had too many cookies, he said. Colin stood up and stumbled off in the opposite direction where Ten had gone and gagged. Gross, Marcy said, teetering up on her heels after him. And then I was alone. Wispy purple clouds slid over the moon, leaving the jack-o'-lantern as my only source of light. I hugged my knees up to my chin and glanced around at all the blue, cracked graves. They poked up from the ground like crooked teeth. Directly behind me was a twisty old tree that had shed us a blanket of wet yellow leaves. I shivered. I'd kind of copped out on the costume this year, just wearing a skeleton hoodie and a pair of thin, dark gray sweatpants with bones printed on them. Didn't even bother to wear a mask. I whipped around. Hello? I asked. Ten? Ha ha, very funny guys trying to scare me to death. Better get a real creepy mask. Silence. 
I stood up. Okay, who is it? I immediately called out. I had seen way too many movies to put up with jokes. I definitely didn't believe in ghosts or whatever, so just because I was in a graveyard didn't mean anything. Everyone underground was dead. Dead. And they had been dead for a long time. Staver! Staver! The voice yelled behind me, and then ten burst into a fit of giggles. <laughs> totally not funny, I said, clutching my chest. And then I shot my hand down, refusing to show him that he scared me. That was... <laughs> that was way too easy. I don't scare you, Louis. I don't believe in... What a crock, Ten said, laughing. Who do you think I was? Stephanie Channing's crazy mom? Hey, where'd the happy couple go? Colin isn't feeling well, I said. Sure, Ten said. Well, now I'm legit gonna go pee. Looks like you're the scaredy cat. He slapped me on the back and went off behind a couple trees past a line of graves. I let out a long whoosh of cold air. Oh man, I had let this Halloween stuff get to me. I let out a laugh. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing to be scared of, I told myself. I wondered if Ten had taken the flask with him. A few moments passed by and I wondered if I should go check on Colin and Marcy, but I decided just to stay put. Maybe I could check the grave. Something hard the size of a football grazed past my shoulder and hit the tree behind me. Ow! Hey, what's the big deal? I massaged my shoulder the spot where it got hit and I saw that it was, it was wet. I brought my hand down to lie the jack-o'-lantern. Blood? Huh? Ten? Is this your idea of another dumb Halloween joke? I picked up the pumpkin to light what had hit me. It was hairy and round and a wet black pile of, of blood was forming underneath it. I lifted it up, grabbing the warm... (gasps) It was Ten's head! I dropped it, his glassy eyes staring right up at me, his mouth in a tight O of surprise. I gasped and stumbled back in shock, and I felt my body go numb. Marcy! Colin, help! Oh my... Somebody! Oh my... I backed away and stumbled hard onto a tombstone behind me. I fell back and hit my head on the wet ground and banged my wrist as I tried to get back up. Marcy! Colin! I screamed. Then, just then, someone came staggering up towards me. Colin? Oh, God, Colin, it's ten! I stammered as I ran up to him, but he seemed to still be feeling sick. His right shoulder was tensed up next to his neck. His head twisted at an odd angle. His left arm reached out for me when I heard Marcy scream. Something's wrong with him, Staver! Don't touch him! By the light of the moon, which had just peeked out from behind the clouds, I saw a river of wet blood running down his chest out of his mouth. He bit me! Marcy came running up to me and hugged me at my side, and I squeezed her hard. I saw a purple-red moon-shaped scrape on her leg. What? I asked. Ten's dead. His his head. I pointed to the ground. Marcy let out a loud scream when she saw it, and we both hugged, and we started to stumble back. Colin was staggering closer and closer to us, his arms out stiffly. He's a real zombie. Oh, God, Staver, what's going on? Marcy screamed. Are you scared yet? A voice said. The jack-o'-lantern that I had dropped to the ground was now glowing brighter than ever. A thick orange light poured out of its eyes and mouth, and I stuttered in disbelief as I saw its mouth move. Huh? Are you scared yet? Huh? Then the pumpkin rose from the ground, knocking zombie Colin face first down. It was being pushed up by a flowing column of green ropes. No, no, not ropes. Vines. Twisty green vines that writhed and stretched beneath it and out from it. The head lolled around, its (laughs) eyes spinning wildly, twin flashlights rays of orange sending light over Ten's dead head. Marcy tumbled hard to the ground as I reached down to help her. I heard loud snapping and ripping noises popping up from all over. It was hard to see the bobbing jack-o'-lantern danced on a wave of vines, but from its light I could see that the ground was moving just beneath our feet. It was alive! No, not the ground exactly. Hands? Hands! Hands coming up from the ground! Hands coming up from the graves! Staver, help me, Marcy shrieked, mascara trailing tears dripping down her face. Two hard, bony hands had both her arms were holding on tight. They were pulling her down to the ground. Marcy! I got down on my hands and knees, but she was going under fast. And before I had time to scream, she disappeared beneath the earth. A whoopsie daisies! Everyone's dead, a familiar voice said. It was Mrs. Channing, Stephanie's mom. She stood next to the floating, dancing pumpkin, her round glasses just like Stephanie's, still glowing. Her stringy blonde hair flew around wildly, her long white apron flapping. You did this? But Stephanie told me why you left her party. You wanted to be scared, Mrs. Channing said. What? I don't understand. You killed them. You killed my friends. Affirmative, Stephanie's mom said. They weren't very nice. 
Little Red Riding Whore gave me a nasty look when she came upstairs to use the restroom. A mother doesn't approve of nasty looks. And Colin almost ate all of my cookies that I spent hours making, leaving none for the other guests. So I put a hex on that last batch. And Reginald, it's ten, I said. Your parents are so lovely, but you never reached out to Stephanie. I always thought you were such a nice young man, Staver. But now I think you're just like the others, and it's time you learned a lesson. Hands popped up from beneath the ground and squeezed my ankles. The earth beneath me crumbled and I started to sink, the skeleton hands so sharp and tight. The jack-o'-lantern's grin stretched wider across its pumpkin face, and Mrs. Channing waved as I screamed a loud, horrible wail of sheer terror. Poor Staver Bookhaven. Scared to death. It seems you've gone to your last Halloween party, Mrs. Channing said. No, I screamed. I felt another couple hands grab my waist and legs and suck me under. Choking on dirt, I said. I wish I were still there. This Halloween party is a total snooze fest. What's next, bobbing for apples, Marcy asked, rolling her eyes. She picked up a gummy black spider and sniffed it. Gross, licorice, I'd sooner retch. I glanced down at my hands, touched my chest, looked around. Stephanie Channing's basement. I wasn't in the graveyard. I I was back in Stephanie Channing's basement. Colin was eating cookies, 12-year-olds in the corner. I was here. I was alive. Are you okay? What are you looking at? Don't have a total spiz fit, Marcy said. I'm going to go stare at myself in the mirror for five minutes. She stalked off. As she went up the stairs, Stephanie Channing was just coming down. I stood frozen in the spot. I'll get you, my pretty, she said. <laughs> oh, hilarious. Happy Halloween, Staver. Well, thanks so much for coming to my Halloween party. And it's so neat that you brought your friends. I tried to form words, but I couldn't speak. Is the white streak in your hair part of your costume? She asked. She placed the cookies in front of Ten and Colin. Ten rolled his eyes and pointed at the clock. I looked at the clock and at Stephanie. It was early. I was alive. We were all alive back at Stephanie Channing's Halloween party. I glanced around in disbelief. And then I saw Mrs. Channing at the top of the stairs staring down at me, wiping her hands on her apron. And then she disappeared into the kitchen. Oh, hey, Stephanie, I said. Hey, you guys, look, it's Stephanie. What a great Halloween party. Uh, uh, Hey, Stephanie, um... Is it time to bob for apples?